standing on your left, right here. On your I'm getting right. old. Mike one, standing on your left. We'll take first question, standing here on the right side. Ah, oh, there go young fellow. Jalen Williams uh, with DubHub. Um, for me, what's the best advice you've gotten to kind of prepare for this finals? Best advice I've gotten. Uh, Number two, second row. I think it was in the bubble. In the bubble, uh, D Wade uh, called UD on FaceTime, and I was in the room, obviously. And he was like, "Hey, man, let me talk to young fellow." Uh, he said, "The biggest thing about the finals is really embrace and cherish the moment uh, because they do not come around often. Uh, you don't have." <laughs> It's not one of those things where you can be like, all right, I'm going to just get here next year because it's, it's, it's not that easy. Teams change, players change, coaches change. Uh, so really embrace that moment. Second row on your left. Hey, Ben, Shane, I'm with Ford Sports. I'm just curious, you know, Duncan had that spurt that really helped you guys in the second half. In what ways have you seen him, I guess, grow and develop in terms of reading the floor, uh, putting the ball on the floor, and attacking? Uh, <clears throat> I would say Duncan has definitely evolved into – he can put the basketball on the floor now. He feels comfortable doing that. He feels comfortable making plays for other people. Um, and obviously, he, you know, he's one of the best shooters in the league. When he, when he ignites, when he gets on fire, it's hard to stop Duncan Robinson. Jeff over here on the right. Jeff Zilge at USA Today. Kevin had a long outlet pass to you that resulted in a penalty plus the ball. I wanted to know from you what makes Kevin's outlet passes so special, and did you have to do anything differently when he joined the team to sort of embrace how he throws that ball? Uh, I feel like the best thing about Kevin Love passing is they're always on the money. Uh, you know, they're always right there, hands ready. It's in the pocket. <clears throat> and my biggest change will be on the – Team with K Love, as you can see, I, as soon as he get the rebound, I take off running, uh, and I feel like we've all benefited from that. In the middle, Mark Kisla, Denver Post. Uh, you were just talking about embracing the moment, and players change, teams change. Um, I believe players win, but talk about Coach Spo, great experience here, and his ability to make tweaks from game to game, and what that means to you guys, and how much you trust that. I mean, <clears throat> he's been to how many finals at this point? Uh, so he's he's seen everything but the win. So, you know, him being in those moments, him cherishing those moments, I feel like he's comfortable here. You know, he isn't making anything up. He isn't uh, trying to figure it out with this, that, and third. Like, he's been through so much with so many other great players that, you know, I feel like <clears> – <throat> He settles in in these moments. This is when he really gets comfortable. It's when he doesn't get really rattled. And uh, this is when he comes up with the game plan for us to be successful. Fourth row, Mike. Uh, Mike Singer, Denver Post. Bam, you've been complimentary of Nikola Jokic in the past. H how would you describe the challenge of facing him at this stage? Uh, I mean, we both have something on the line, which is a championship. So <clears throat> obviously it's going to be a fight. But, you know, he, he's, a, he's a great player. You know, he, he's a two-time MVP, and uh, you respect that. Bam, Ethan. Ethan's calling like five reasons sports. Bam, you're at the line um, for some clinching free throws, crowds going crazy, stuff on the video board and everything. How do you focus in that moment? What do you think of? Do you think of nothing at all? Like, how do you handle a moment like that? Uh, I mean, you treat it like you're the only man in the arena. You know, you take your time. Inhale, exhale, uh, and then you you go back to all them times you had to shoot free throws after running suicides, running tens, uh, being dog tired after practice, having to make free throws, and you just go back to those moments, and then it gives you that sort of confidence, like I I've been here, uh, and you go to the line, knock them down. Second row, middle. Hey, bam, Josh from Channel Seven in Miami. I know you've been in the finals before, but just what's your excitement of actually doing this? in front of the home fans with a true environment in Miami tomorrow night? I mean, <clears throat> I'm expecting it to be, you know, every time we make a layup, free throw, uh, three, it'd be an avalanche of noise. Uh, and obviously when we get stops, you know, for us, 
we've seen what this city looks like when it's been in the final. So, you know, it's good to have the opportunity to be back in front of these fans and uh, have this opportunity. Melissa? Hey, Bam. Melissa Roland, Fox Sports. Um, speaking of Jokic, one of the most under-talked about or underrated parts of his game is his basketball IQ. What have you noticed in that sense in terms of what type of challenge that presents? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, how his his – he can go through two or three coverages and figure it out in a matter of, you know, up and down, up and down. And he, he's already read the game, you know, reading the game. And uh, so the biggest thing for us is switching up the coverages and uh, having them see different looks. Right over here in the aisle. Ben, uh, Fabio Malavaz, NBA Brazil. Um, it was, you know, you guys double and triple sometimes uh, uh, Jokic. And what do you make up this notion that you guys letting him have the, you know, his points on the last game with the intensity? How you compare that with the intensity? I don't think it's fair with you, by the way. <laughs> so, but I want to see uh, what you think about that and uh, your, comp your comparison with the, inten the intensity that you guys played. Uh, I mean, the biggest thing for, for us guarding him is just make him take diff difficult shots. We're not just going to just let a man go get 40. Uh, <laughs> that's just not smart by any means, uh, especially when you're guarding a guy who's been the two-time MVP of this league. Uh, biggest thing for us is force everybody on that team into tough shots, and you live with that result. Uh, you know, going into the intensity part, you know, it's good to be in our environment. It's good to be in the 305 and uh, have the crowd on our side. We go. Cooper, Alvaro, and then Dan, last three. SuperMoreHeadHeat.com. Bam, with Jokic kind of changing his, his depth in the pick and roll throughout the game, how much does that change things for you, Where whether he's back in the middle or where? One more time. I cannot hear you. <laughs> with Jokic changing his defensive depth in pick and rolls, how does that change your reads, whether he's kind of back in the middle or way up, on, up to touch? Uh, it doesn't. My thing in the pick and roll is to make sure that the guard gets open. Uh, so set a great screen. That's Jimmy Butler. Uh, am I done? Uh, Dan, over here on the right. Sorry, oh, man. My, my, my bad. Man. <laughs> no, no, apologies. We'll get you out of here quick. Uh, Dan Devine, Yahoo Sports. Uh, you mentioned the importance of making other guys take tough shots. Uh, Jamal Murray obviously had a big game for them in game one, a little more quiet in game two. Jimmy spent a lot of time on him, wondering what you saw out of Jimmy in that defensive matchup in game two. Oh, man. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> uh, Jamal Murray, uh, Jimmy spent a lot of time on him in game two, had more of a quiet game two. I'm wondering what you saw out of Jimmy in that defensive matchup in game two. Uh, you know, he takes the challenge. You know, whatever the assignment is, <clears throat> I feel like he'll take the challenge and uh, he's going to find a way to make it tough on him. You know, so biggest thing for us is having a guy like that that's willing to take the, ch take the challenge on defense and also be the number one op uh, option on offense. Alvaro, last one on the left, stand Bam. Alvaro Martín of NBA Latin America and NBA Mexico. I was watching film of your zone, and in one single possession, you can go from 3-2 to 1-3-1 one, one if someone's in the nail, and nothing happens. It's like you've done this for years. Is it just that you're all professional basketball players, or how long did it take for you guys to gel to that level of achievement? Uh, one, we have incredible experience on our team. Uh, so we have veterans who's run 2-3, 3-2, 1-3-1, whatever that may be. And then also, <clears throat> we, we drill it uh, to nausea to the point where, like, we're tired of it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we always have that in our back pocket just in case we need it. Thank you. Black Lives Matter, people.